In this video, I'll be sharing some tips for using the Crop Tool in Photoshop. This video was inspired by a post from Bohan Zivkovic at Design Easy. You can read his post by going to the URL shown on the screen. And now I'll switch over to Photoshop. The Crop Tool is the fifth icon down on the toolbar. When you choose the Crop Tool, a frame will appear around the image. There are handles at the corners and midpoints of each side of the frame, and you could use those handles to visually crop your image. Up in the Options bar, over on the left, there's a Crop Preset menu. Crop can occur on two different levels. The first is Ratio. And when I'm in the Ratio level, Width and Height fields will display to the right of the menu. Between those two fields is a button for reversing the orientation of the crop. So this image is landscaped or horizontal. If I were to click this button with the double arrow in it, it would keep the proportion the same, but it would reverse the orientation so it would be cropped to vertical or portrait. By clicking it again, I can set it back to horizontal. There is a clear button, a straighten button, which I'll be talking about later, and then there are a couple of menus. One is for the overlay. You can see in the crop frame that there is a grid over it, a 3x3 three three grid. So if I wanted a different overlay for positioning, I could go up to the overlay menu and choose one of the other options, for instance, diagonal and now I have more of a diamond kind of grid in my crop frame. I'll set that back to rule of thirds. The next button is for additional options that you can turn on or off when using the crop tool. There is a checkbox turned on to delete cropped pixels. I'm going to uncheck it. If I were to crop this image, save and close the file, and later reopen it, the image data of the cropped areas would be remembered, and if I needed to restore some of that image area, I could do so. Finally, there are buttons for resetting, canceling, or committing the crop. Now we'll look at the other level of crop. Going back to my crop preset menu, I'll change it to image size, which is expressed in the menu as width by height by resolution. The big difference is that in addition to width and height fields, you also have a resolution field. When you're cropping on the ratio level, the resolution of the image remains unchanged. But when you go into image size, you could specify width, height, as well as resolution. This is particularly useful if you're working for both print and web and you have high resolution images that need to be prepared for a website so they would obviously need to be res down. Going back to my crop preset menu, you'll see that there are some default settings on both ratio level and image size level. So original ratio down through 16.9 those are all ratio levels. Then from front image down through 1366 by 768 at 135 ppi, those are image size levels. You can also create your own custom preset. To do that, your first step is to specify the width and height that you want. This is particularly useful, especially if you're working for web and images need to be sized for, say, a pop-up window. So my first step will be to specify the size. I'm going to set this image size to a width of 380 pixels by 350 pixels at a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. 
You'll also note that there is a drop-down menu next to the resolution field where you could work in either pixel per inch or pixel per centimeter. And now I can go ahead and commit this crop by clicking the check mark. And I'll go back to my crop preset menu and down towards the bottom select new crop preset. By default the name is set to reflect whatever values I've entered for width, height, and resolution. So I'll leave it at that and go ahead and click OK. And now I'll switch over to another image. Because of the sticky memory in Photoshop, it's remembering the crop values anyway. So what I'll do is I'll reset this. Going up to the Options bar, I'll click the Reset button. And now I'll go back to my Crop Preset menu. And you'll see that the custom preset that I just created is listed. So I'll select it. I can always move an image around inside my crop frame by going into the center, clicking, and I could drag the image over if I wanted. And I'll go ahead and commit this crop as well. There are other things you can do with the crop tool besides reducing an image area. So I'll switch to a different image. First I'll reset this. The crop tool can also be used to straighten an image. You can see that this image is a little tilted and what I'd like is to rotate the image so that the far shoreline is horizontal. There's a couple of ways I can do this. One of the simplest ways is to simply drag to rotate. First I'll need to click inside the frame to activate the grid. And now if I go and hover outside any one of the handles, you'll see that my cursor changes to a rotate icon. When I see that cursor change, I can click, hold, and drag to rotate the image inside the crop frame. I'll show you another method that you can use. So I'll cancel this. You also have a straighten function in the crop tool that can be useful if you have maybe a shorter area that you're using to judge the vertical or horizontal plane. First I'll need to click back inside my crop frame to activate the grid. And now up in the options bar I'm going to click the straighten button. When you activate the straighten function your cursor displays a crosshairs. And now I'll come down to my image and what I'm going to do is drag out a short stretch along that far shoreline. So I'll click, hold, drag, just a little ways, release my mouse, and my image is rotated so that the stretch that I dragged will snap to whatever is closest, either the horizontal or vertical plane. You can also use the crop tool for extending an image area. I'll switch to another file. And this is very simple. Say I want to extend the image to the right. I can go to the right center handle on the frame. My cursor changes into a pull icon. So now I'll click, hold, and drag out to the right. The image area has been extended. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again to Bohan Zivkovic for the inspiration. Please check out the Design Easy website for more great tips on using Photoshop and other products in Adobe Creative Suite.